Hello, my name is Dr. Jamie Walker, and I'm teaching a wonderful course here at Santa Clara University in the Ethnic Studies Department. It's called Documentary Making for Social Justice. Hi, I'm Tori Rutherford. I'm a freshman here at Santa Clara University, and my major is Communications. My name is Gladys Mancillas. I'm a sophomore here at Santa Clara University, and I'm a double major in Theater and Communications. I'm Brianna Shear, a senior studying sociology. Hi, my name is Isabel Luron, and I'm a senior at Santa Clara University. I have zero film experience and background. Um, most people consider me actually technologically challenged, um, I would say, and so it's been kind of funny learning through this process and getting equipped and stuff. I, I really had no background anything whatsoever. I, I had iMovie in, on my laptop, but I never really opened it or played around with it. Um, I've done editing in high school or attempted to do editing in high school, and that didn't go so well because most of my friends were like more experienced with that so if we were in a group project they would take care of that and I would do other things so I never got to learn that. Um, I was nervous because I felt that a lot of the girls in the class or uh, people in the class were probably going to be way more advanced than me and I felt like I was already at a disadvantage or I was behind but um, Coming into it, I felt like we were all pretty much at the same level, and that just made me a, a bit, like, way more comfortable to just learn and not feel intimidated by anyone. No, I've never picked up a digital, like, a recording camera. Um, I think I've only ever picked up a digital camera, and then even then I'm not, like, the kind of person that takes pictures all the time or records on it all the time. I like don't download those photos all the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the first time that I've ever picked up a camera. Well, I had no idea how to actually make a film. I mean, taking the clips here and there and adding over titles seemed easy until, you know, you actually are stuck trying to do it. And I just wanted to try to make it happen. The only fears I had coming into the class was that uh, I'd, I'd come into the class and not having much experience at all, and I'd, I'd be with a bunch of upperclassmen who knew exactly what they were doing and would have film jargon that was just completely above my head. But I think right as I entered the class, I realized Dr. Walker was able to define everything for us, and she was really good about leading us through the class. And so, I mean, those fears almost vanished immediately. Well, I kind of wasn't sure on how to go about it and what to do at all. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know where to finish. And that was my biggest fear. But the course was structured so well that it helped along every single way, with every single step. I decided to take documentary making for social justice because I was in Dr. Jamie Walker's African American independent film class last quarter. And I love the way she taught. And I really wanted to gain more experience in film because that's eventually what I want to end up going into and I thought this would be the perfect class to get a baseline for that. Um, I do not have much film background. I've always been interested in films and I would always take it as a hobby to see films in high school and then I have a YouTube channel where I'd uh, mess around with the camera and put together small shorts of us being funny or just you know just odd random bits and sorts of uh, short videos but other than that I do not have much film experience. I aim to show that here at Santa Clara there are very few resources offered to students. Um, it's a big problem that I've come across being pregnant is that I can't find anything out there at the university for me to do as far as taking care of myself and my child. Um, Although you would think that a university is there to help you, they're, they're really not helping in any way. There's nothing on campus specifically that is, like, that is in support of pregnant students.
I decided to focus on pregnancy because currently I am a pregnant student at Santa Clara and it's really hard trying to trying to be a senior and finish up school but having all this extra stress about how can I finish if I have a baby on the way, how can I afford going to school and taking care of a child. And I wanted to let other people know that it's hard, but you can do it. So I want to educate people and encourage them to help out with these resources and um, really see the injustices between some of the resources that are out there and how some people don't qualify and maybe prompt them to act on behalf of them or maybe open up eyes of the organizations to see that you know all the restrictions are affecting our community. I think with this film I'm really trying to show how um, how our, our workers here are treated first of all and to try and raise awareness about seeing these Benson workers or Bon Appetit workers as people and as individuals. I think since I've been a freshman, I was always really surprised by how people would talk about the workers, um, you know, just saying that they were slow or that people didn't get their food on time and just having like all these complaints. Um, when I feel like a lot of times, especially at Santa Clara, there's so many privileged individuals here that don't understand how or like the behind the scenes of, of what that work environment is really like. Um, so I kind of wanted to expose that a little bit and I also wanted to show all sort of like the accomplishments and the gains that the workers have made because I think that here it's been really interesting to also see that I think that they've been really organized um, and I don't know that that happens on every university campus in the same respect or even in every work environment. People here at Santa Clara don't want to hear about it uh, or don't want to talk about it um, other than the people who are working towards um, changing things. And what I considered most important were defining rape. Um, that's one of the bigger issues for me. There's so many people who have different ideas of what rape really is, even here on campus. Like, even professors ha have different ideas. Um, the law's definition is different from uh, someone's personal definition, and I really wanted to tackle that. Maybe not clarify that, but just expose all the different definitions and feelings about it. I chose this particular documentary because it was close to my heart. I joined the rugby team this year, and as a freshman coming into university, it really provided a home away from home for me. Um, the girls were very welcoming and uh, just really created a family environment where I could become a better person. Uh, rugby has a long-standing tradition of good values, good sportsmanship, and creating people who the sport can be proud of. And coming into that environment, it was, it was really inspiring for me. And to see all these girls who have done so much for me to have to put up with these obstacles just to play the sport they love was really heartbreaking. And I wanted to make sure that their story got out there and was heard so that way maybe it would start to Im improve a little bit for them. I think what's been most helpful in this class for, for me is uh, actually the step-by-step -step process that's been laid out through the different classes and, and being able to really start you know, with basic creative writing exercises and then go on to individual units of the film and watching my film evolve through that process has really actually let me hone my ideas and created a film that I probably would have been all scattered if I had not gone through the process that way. Most helpful I would say is watching other documentaries and seeing how they're structured because without examples it's impossible to get ideas of, about how you want to structure yours or what type of elements you want to incorporate into your own documentary. It's great for getting ideas um, as far as structure and angles and lighting and just all different types of techniques. My favorite book is the Roberta Monroe reading because um, she just relaxes me so much whenever I'm stressing out or um, overwhelmed with so much footage that I have and that I don't know how to like condense it on to 10 minutes 
she like I just read a chapter or like read a few pages from her and she just says you know this is what you do calm down she uh, I remember reading a page she said something k-i-s-s -S. she said keep it simple sister so um that was something that really stuck with me also and um I really enjoy reading her book I think the most helpful thing has pretty much been the um the workshop that we did with Michael Balin um, I really appreciated that because I think before then I was really worried about how the whole program worked. Um, and so when he went through the steps of just how to do everything and made things seem a lot easier and a, a lot more exciting also to, to work on the computer and to see a final project and to see how it worked. Watching short films, watching the films that appear in film festivals, watching different movies like For the Bible Tells Me So or like other documentaries. Um, and just focusing on all the um, cinematic techniques or all the filmmakers' choices, like it really helps me to do that because I get to write all of them down and just like pick and choose or pick which one fits with my topic or my documentary, which one I like the most, and that's where I get my ideas from. I don't think I'd be able to do it just on my own. I'd have to see something. So I think that's been very helpful. Um, the critical response uh, sheets that we have to fill out, uh, that kind of that kind of reminds me that I'm not there just to watch the movie and enjoy it because every time that we watch a film or a documentary in class, I'm very tempted to just sit back, relax, and watch it. But when I have the sheet in front of me, I uh, remember that the purpose of watching the film or the documentary is to be analytical and notice all these things that are important for my documentary also. The reason why I decided to create a course called Documentary Making for Social Justice was because I really wanted to find a means by which my students could get actively involved and engaged in their community. Particularly, I wanted to help them to develop some kind of critical consciousness about marginalized or underrepresented or disenfranchised groups and communities, diverse communities, not only within their own community, but around the world. Um, and I wanted to introduce them to the uh, genre of documentary or filmmaking to help chronicle these kind of injustices that are occurring around the globe um, in order to help us move towards some kind of uh, social justice or some kind of peace or change. Um, I believe that when students become actively involved you know, in their education and in their own communities learning to really serve the communities that they live in and other communities that are different from them, that they really are able to contribute towards uh, moving us to a more peaceful, sane, um, humane, and just society. I'm really, really inspired about this group of students because this is their first time, many of them it's their first time actually handling a camera and so giving them the documentary genre as a tool to tell their own stories their own personal stories of triumph as well as the stories of others you know is a very empowering um, tool it provides them with a sense of voice uh, and agency and it also uh, really uh, shines light on the communities that are underrepresented um, and so it's a mutually beneficial process where in which students develop a critical consciousness about the communities that they are targeting, you know, and they become more aware about how these universal stories really bind and connect us all. So I'm really looking forward to their growth and development throughout the quarter. So. Here's to my students. I know they're going to do a great job and fully inspired, and I'm just so glad that we got the opportunity to launch this course.
Um, so after this course, would you consider creating another documentary or film? Actually, I would. I really enjoyed the whole process, although it was frustrating, but I would definitely try to do it again, especially if it's something I feel passionate about. Right. Is there any advice that you can give to future filmmakers or first-time filmmakers out there? What would it be? I think the advice I would have to give to, I guess, future filmmakers like myself is um, preparation is everything. It's You'd be surprised. You can't just take a camera out and film uh, anything you want. I mean, you won't have the overarching storyline or that wholeness that makes a film so wonderful. I think the more you prepare, the better your film is going to be. And um, don't be surprised by the amount of time it takes because it's going to take a lot of time and you've got to be committed. You've got to be committed to it. I think I'm going to... I give the advice that Jamie Walker always gives us also in class to to keep it simple because sometimes if we want to do so much we want to do our best that we get overwhelmed and when keeping it simple can be can still be strong so just I think that should be something that should be kept in mind keep it simple sister Yes. <laughs> Simple sister.